Hello. Message for the birth celebration of Mahatma Gandhi at the Embassy of India, Tokyo, October 2nd, 2nd 2021. My title is Learning from Gandhiji for us to survive the COVID-19 crisis. Namaste. It is truly a great honor and joy for me to speak at the gathering to celebrate the birth of Mahatma Gandhi. I would like to thank the Ambassador Sanjay Kumar Varma and Professor Siddharth Singh, the director of the Vivekananda Culture Center for organizing the occasion and for inviting me. I am Ayako Uno, a research fellow at the Institute of Asian Culture Studies of the International Christian University in Tokyo. Today, it is with great joy that I share the message of Gandhiji and commemorate his birthday with you. I would like to give a message from my own humble experience of learning from Gandhiji over the years, not only as a researcher, but as an ordinary person, as a wife and a mother living under the threats of COVID-19. I sincerely hope you may find my message meaningful in some ways for surviving and overcoming the difficulties which we are all facing today. First, I would like to share the image of learning from Gandhiji. Many of you may have heard of Mahadev Desai, who was Gandhiji's most reliable and devoted personal secretary for more than 25 years until his death at 50 years old in 1942, when he was in prison with Gandhiji. Mahadev's son, Narayan Desai, was born and brought up in Gandhiji's ashram, literally playing on, his, on the knees of Gandhiji. When Narayan grew older, he worked with his father to support Gandhiji. Thus, Narayan had Gandhiji's love and trust imbibed in his body and soul so deeply that Narayan Desai continued to devote his life as a staunch Gandhian until his death in 2015. In his late years, Narayan began in order to realize his lifelong mission of bringing Gandhiji's life and message alive to the ordinary people of India. He began Gandhi Kata, or the narrative of Gandhiji, where he would tell the stories and sing songs of the Gandhiji's whole life in Gujarati for the people, taking more than five days to present at many various places. Also, Narayan wrote a huge four-volume biography on Gandhiji in Gujarati, which was later translated to English in 2009. This English version, titled My Life is My Message, I have been leading for 10 years with my mentor and friends at ICU Gandhi Study Group until we had to stop the meeting for a while due to COVID-19. It is indeed, this book is indeed a beautiful book, helping us to understand the inner and outer struggles of Gandhiji, how he progressed step by step towards the light or truth. It was written not as information, but as an invitation for us all to join Gandhiji in our own progress. As you may know, there are already hundreds of biographies and books about Gandhiji. So why would Narayan want to add another? What would you think? Narayan writes in his preface of the book that he is writing this book to share the joy of living in the presence of Gandhiji. So I quote from his preface, Narayan says, in the preface, I have been moved to write it simply to share with readers the joys of being in Gandhi's constant presence. What does this mean? Let me share with you what Narayan writes further in his preface. I quote, as a child, Narayan says, as a child, Gandhi was more a friend to me than a leader or a Mahatma. 
In my adolescence, he was my taskmaster when I helped my father in his secretariat. Even after Gandhi's passing away, I have tried to live a life that I think would have met his approval. Spending one third of my life in his physical presence and the rest in his spiritual presence has been a most blissful experience for me. Blissful means a lot of joy. Blissful experience for me. Sharing one's joy with the rest of the world is perhaps the surest way to multiply the joy. End of quote. So you see, Narayan wrote this book because he wanted to share the joy of living in Gandhi's constant presence, which continued even after Gandhiji passed away. Since then, Narayan lived in Gandhiji's spiritual presence. And why he wanted to share the joy? It is because sharing joy is the best way to multiply the joy. This is the wonderful message of Narayan Desai, that even today we are all living in the constant presence of Gandhiji, and he wants us to realize the joy and multiply the joy of it by sharing. This is the image of what learning from Gandhiji means and I would like to share with you today. But actually, when we look at our world today, we see that there are so many sufferings and pain, so much division and fighting going on among the people and nations, where constant economic and political competitions are depriving, depriving people of their peace, if not their lives. It is no wonder if we may feel very sad and depressed. Added to this grim situation from last year, the world is, at, world is in utter confusion and at a loss due to the pandemic caused by COVID-19. Although we may wish that things would sooner or later be back to what we think was normal, I am afraid that after COVID, things would not be the same. I tell my daughters that we are living witnesses to this COVID-19, which will be another decisive turning point in the history of humanity. Years from now, if humanity still survives on Earth, younger generations of our grandchildren and great-grandchildren might be surprised to learn that we lived through the COVID and exclaim, Oh, you were there when the COVID-19 hit the world? What was, it, what was it like before the COVID? Please tell us, you know. By that time, since so many changes were brought about by the pandemic, it may be difficult to imagine for the future generations how the people used to live before the COVID. What can we ordinary people do in this world now to make it a little bit better for the future generations? You know the present situation very well. But let me review briefly what were the changes brought about to our daily lives by COVID-19. Now, after the COVID, we are unable to meet each other face to face, hug our dear people, hug our friends, no. No sing together at a karaoke or at the community center. Young and old are suffering from lack of physical touch, unable to get together in person. I have been teaching university classes online, and perhaps information can be communicated, by, but I constantly feel, how could we learn from each other without meeting face to face? COVID-19 has taken away our real life experiences, which ties relationship, which, which ties relationships which, with each other. Even among family members, we cannot take care of our loved ones once they are put in hospitals and care institutions because the patients must be separated to be protected from COVID. Separated, we lose the chance to exchange loving glances and caring words and even smiles with each other. COVID has affected not only on the personal level, but changes hit the society level as well. For example, many traditional festivals had to be cancelled 
causing many valuable experiences to get lost without chances to hand them to younger generations. It used to be that at these festivals, celebrating and thanking together for everything given, we could eat and drink and be merry and these joyful experiences together help to bind people together as a living community. Not only celebrations, but we have lost occasions where we could mourn and share the sadness and pain of the loss of dear ones together. How could these be replaced by online events? I don't really know. Thus, it is no wonder that the strangers and unknown people become threatening presence. This fear of others have been already spreading, spreading among us in modern times slowly over many years, but with the COVID-19, it has taken a more serious and acute turn. We are constantly put under fear of getting contaminated and sick by invisible substances which might be carried by each other. So we are living under constant fear, afraid, afraid, and afraid. Under this situation, it is no wonder we allow and rely on, rely on more and more control by the government over our daily lives. In this situation, what would Gandhiji have said to us? As you know, Gandhiji was a man of faith or a man of God, experimenting all his life in search for truth, who led his life as a selfless servant. One of the most important messages of Gandhiji, which galvanized the Indian people in their struggle for freedom, was, do not fear. How could one be so brave as Gandhiji today in this time of fear and anxiety? Let us learn the secret from Gandhiji. In 1909, Gandhiji wrote his Hindu Swaraj or Indian Home Rule, where he stated that he is deeply tormented by the painful, painful situation of India and radically criticized the modern civilization as the cause, being immoral, leading people to lose self-control. Gandhiji lamented, we are turning away from God. Facing this predicament, Gandhiji presented in Hindu Swaraj the realization of Swaraj or self-rule or freedom as the sole aim for the Indian people and the whole union and the whole humanity. Swaraj is not just the political independence, but it means to learn to rule ourselves, which will lead us to know who we are. This is what Gandhiji wrote in Hindu Swaraj. At the beginning of 20th century, when Hindu Swaraj was written, the modern civilization was ruling the West and was on the process of conquering the rest of the world. Thus, Gandhiji could state in Hindu Swaraj with rare clarity that India still has time to get rid of modern civilization, but time is running out day by day. Gandhiji led the people of India in the great nonviolent struggle for freedom but the partition shattered his dream, lifelong dream of Swaraj for all. Now today, we are born and raised as the children of the modern civilization, and, and thus we cannot see, as Gandhiji did, what is the central problem of today's world. But living under the COVID-19 may give us a rare chance to realize our own yearning, our, our own yearning for Swaraj hidden deep inside ourselves. Today, we are all experiencing that it is painful and sad to be isolated from each other. At the same time, we are fearful and full of distrust with each other and the world. In other words, we are really lacking faith. Why is that so? I think it is because only by meeting each other working with others and serving each other, that we can learn and realize who we are. This leads to the essence of Gandhiji's faith. Who are we? Let us look at the foundation of Gandhiji's faith, which was precisely expressed in response to questions posed by S. Radhakrishnan, Radhakrishnan a philosopher who later became the second president of India. Gandhiji said, 
We are all sparks of truth. The sum total of these sparks is indescribable as yet unknown truth, which is God. I am being, led, being daily led near to it by constant prayer. This is what Gandhiji wrote. Here, Gandhiji sees that we are all sparks, flashes of little lights, all sparks of truth, that is, all of us are part of unity or one, which he calls truth or God, which is the source and the goal of the light. Here, Gandhiji does not claim that he has already reached the goal or already knows God, but he humbly states, as yet unknown truth. So Gandhiji himself, as all the others, need to be led near to the truth or the light by constant daily prayer. So you see that Gandhiji is inviting us all to see that all of us, including you and me, is part of the whole. Once we are led to see that we are all sparks of truth, we should not fear or be afraid of others. However, this realization is very difficult to reach since we are so full of our own wants and worries, our selfish desires. Gandhiji as a foreigner shows us the way. To get rid of our selfishness is only possible by looking up at the light and walking humbly on paths of selfless service and by constant, constant prayers. This seems to be not an easy path to follow, but that path is, according to Gandhiji and Narayan Desai, and those who follow the way, full of joy, joyful. I know that in the world today, it is so difficult to be joyful. We cannot meet each other, we cannot travel freely without worries, we are afraid, etc., etc. But as Gandhiji says, if we realize who we really are, that is, the sparks of light of truth, we cannot but be joyful and grateful, and moreover, we can bring our little light to those who are next to us, near to us, by sharing our joys, by praying for each other. It is not that we can bring about a great revolution in the world, but we can turn ourselves upside down, but by awakening to Gandhiji's way of seeing the world. In this world today, under the crisis of COVID-19, Gandhiji continues to invite us through his spiritual, spiritual presence, inviting us to see the little light inside each of us and in all the other people, and let the light shine a little bit outside, giving and caring the others, praying for others, so that the people around you can enjoy the warmth and light emitted through you. Such a way of living will surely increase the joy for yourself and for all around you. This way of living is taught from ancient times in various traditional thoughts. And in Japan, for example, there is an old testament of wisdom in Buddhist tradition expressed as let each be a lamp and light up the corner where you are. Ichigu wo terasu. So maybe this teaching is nothing new for you. Gandhiji himself said that he has nothing new to teach the world, but he teaches are as old as hills. But as we have forgotten all these ancient wisdoms, it is good to remember through living examples such as Gandhiji so that we would not be ruled by the darkness surrounded, surrounding us right now. Let us see our own inner light and try to proceed step by step towards the truth or the light, shedding our selfishness and giving out the inner light to others despite the surrounding darkness of this world, so that the future generations may receive the light too. Thank you for listening to my little message. Namaste.